All right, let's just jump right into combat. Here we've got a fleet that I'm going to show off. Some people don't think you can take Astrals up against Radiance, that they're just not that useful. I disagree, and I'm going to show you how I think to best utilize them. So, for starters, Omens are just pretty good. We're going to use them to capture the points. This Falcon can take that point. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take both our Astrals and have them escort this Paragon that I'm piloting. Now, this is more or less the best way to use Astrals, is you need a big, dumb battleship to sit in front of them and block incoming damage while the two Astrals can just do their thing. And part of what this does is it also forces the Astrals to get closer to the enemy, because one of the biggest ways to boost your carrier DPS is to get them closer to the enemy so that the bombers take less time to do their runs. The only problem with that is, well, that puts them at risk for one, and number two, the AI just really doesn't want to do that. Like, if left to their own devices, a lot of the time these Astrals won't even sit. They'll be so far away that even the Squalls can't get in range. Which is a bit ridiculous considering the Squalls have 2,500 range, and they're very useful. So having them sit beyond that range is a bit ridiculous. But that's not an issue if you have them escort the Paragon. They're going to follow you to the ends of the Earth, which means that they can get relatively close to the enemy. But, because of the Paragon, they're relatively safe. And what that means is that, well, they can just focus on maximizing their DPS. Uh, the combination of resistant flux conduits with polarized armor means you can vent very aggressively with this thing. So it's, uh, it's pretty nice is kind of a very relevant because it does build up a lot of soft ones. Oh well. He got hit by a leaper. No big deal. This fleet only has two radiants, so I'm not exactly worried about showing off the best piloting skills. You know, that's not it's not necessarily my strong suit here. Although I'm not terrible at it. Also, uh, advanced turret gyros, S mod bonuses. It's pretty good. Uh, we'll talk about the S mod bonuses when I get to the refit screen, but some of them are pretty good. I think that the way that it came out, with the, the penalties being what they are and the bonuses being what they are, most of them feel like there's a good place for them without being too overpowered. No, I say too overpowered, without really being overpowered for the cost that you have, to, you know, the price you get to pay for them. The, the, the ordnance points you have to sacrifice to get those bonuses. Oh yeah, and of course, gravitons now actually being useful is different. Uh, the, the fact that they debuff enemy shields is pretty nice. And since the maximum number that stacks up for the, the shield debuff is three, and gravitons can't end up gravitons. Astrals can stack up to three on a single target. Hey, that's a pretty nice... Hey, that's pretty nice. On top of that, they also, you know, uh, come with advanced optics, so... Stacking gravitons on astrals is not a terrible idea. You see, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna use fortress shields to block as much damage as I need to while letting the Astrals do most of the work here. And then as soon as the par as soon as the Radiant's gone, I can just vent and, well, what are they, what's the Brilliant gonna do? Not a whole lot. You know, I'm just now realizing, I kind of forgot to deploy these when I had the capture points. But it looks like we're doing fine anyways. Uh, they weren't contributing too much. Uh, we'll talk about, again, we'll talk about all of these builds after I'm done clearing out all of these guys. There should be another Radiant coming in. I'm pretty sure I didn't kill two. Or did I, and I just can't remember. Yes, my memory is going. I'm becoming dementia. Or maybe I just need to sleep more. With that... Well, with that out of the way. Let's see. You should be... Fine, as long as you don't get 
too stupid. Uh, yeah, you're just gonna fight over that. I'll say at this point I might just be able to put it on autopilot. Yeah, that, uh... See, the, the nice thing about S1 at Turgyros when combined with target analysis is that it gives you a very smooth damage curve, right? Putting both of them together gives you 15% damage to frigates and then 20% damage to everything larger than frigates, right? So whether it's destroyers, cruisers, or capitals, it all evens out to 20%. Whereas before you were just, you would, you know, you'd deal more damage to larger targets, which does make sense. It's pretty useful because larger targets can have more armor. So having more hit strength is going to be more useful, relatively speaking. All right, I guess I'll deploy them now. Can't hurt. Especially with this brilliant right next to the deployment zone. And I'll put myself on autopilot because... Uh, it'll, maybe it'll be easier to talk it's because I'm not as focused on piloting a ship I'm not super familiar with. I honestly find it easier to pilot Clausenberg ships just because it's... Uh, pretty straightforward. You, you burn in when you have low flux, and you do damage, and then you burn out when you have high flux. Piloting a battleship is kind of a different skill set. A lot of it just comes down to knowing when to drop your shields and knowing when to actively vent. Because if you can, you know, some people think that the AI can pilot battleships relatively close to player level, and they can to a degree, but something that you can do as a player that makes them vastly more effective is just aggressively venting whenever you have the chance. That makes a... that can allow you to just plow through far more enemies than you normally should be able to. Oh yeah, as you can see, we got through... maybe I did kill two Radiants already. Yeah, we... I mean, we got through them without even deploying the Falcons. So that's, like, you know, 52 deployment points that we just weren't using against Alpha Core Radiance. And it was not a big deal. Now, of course, this isn't like a... This is only like a one order worth of enemies, so... You know, against a larger Ordo, you might want to bring the Falcons right from the get-go. Hopefully get through them faster. Run, Omen! Don't die! Yeah, he's good. Ah, there we go. There you are, my friend. It's good to see you. Uh, you know, there's four squalls waiting for you, plus a paragon. Uh, I'm sure your friend is already well acquainted with them. And as you can see, as long as those gravitons are on target, the enemy shield takes extra damage. Plus the squalls, and the radiant is very quickly overwhelmed. Yeah, I can just tell you to do that. Yeah, these Falcons are not really designed to kill anything particularly quickly. They're more designed to just harass the enemy and distract them. Because the main th the main thrust of this fleet is the Paragon Astral Combo. Driving right to the heart of the fleet. And doing stuff like that. They make it look easy. While the uh, Omens go around and take the points to distract the enemy. Well, you know, they capture the points early on so you can get your more deployment points. And then, and we lost Noman. And then they, you know, they distract the enemy because the enemy's going to fight over the capture points. Meanwhile, the Falcons, uh, you know, they they kite really good. I might change them out for something else. To be honest, they're not bad per se, but I don't think that's quite what I need. Falcons are definitely have a strong niche in terms of kiting. They just have a very unique combination of, of high top speed maneuvering jets and a cruiser grade targeting unit that allows them to kite better than any other ship in the game. But I'm not sure that's what I need exactly. Yeah, and then there's just this last little guy. Everyone's over there on that capture point. Let's just full assault this. So yeah, if you want to bring bombers, this is the way to do it. Double Astral behind a... Well, I suppose you could use an Onslaught or maybe an Invictus. Ooh, that would be interesting. 
Um, but, yeah, I know you're hoping that I was going to use new ships, but nah. I'm using old ships, but I'm going to talk about some new mechanics. Specifically S-Mod bonuses, because, because they're pretty interesting. Alright, so, with the Paragon, what have I got going? Well, may I suppose I should start with player skills. This is what I've got going on. I've got these, uh, both the... Uh, don't mind the fact that they're they're shuffled around a bit. Just don't pay attention to that. Uh, that was... Don't worry about it. I've got the frigate skills, the carrier skills, crew training, officer management, best of the best. Also got stacked up both of these with hull restoration and then these three combat skills. And what that results in is this Paragon being pretty good. It's got both... It's got the armor tanking skills and the shield tanking skills. So... While I don't have flux regulation, other than that, I've maxed out the shields and the armor at the same time. Then I've got dual flax for point defense, a couple burst PDs back here, plasmas, tachyon lance. Very durable and also has a lot of damage potential. I'm a bit disappointed in the uh, the PD. I really feel like there's a few there's a few times where I think Reapers need to get shot down and they don't. So maybe I'll drop some caps for more burst PDs to pull that off. We'll see. Now, the per now I, I can kind of get away with less point defense than normal, partly because of turret gyros. 25% bonus damage. That's just half the point defense skill. That right there is half the point defense skill, plus the extra damage to smaller ship classes, which is really useful. Advanced turret gyros, the s mod bonus, along with tachyon lances, is fantastic because the, the extra turret speed helps them track small little frigates, and then the extra damage helps them pop them instantly. Right, those those little lumens, they're not as big of a deal when you've got s modded turret gyros and tachyon lances. You can just get rid of them, and then they're not in your hair anymore. So that's pretty nice. Uh, also, I did think I mentioned this, but elite polarized armor with resistant flux conduits allows you to vent very aggressively, which, if you're going to pilot a battleship manually, is kind of necessary. That's really how you maximize the value, the, uh, the, the you know, the potential of your battleship. So, getting both of those is a good idea. Highly recommend it. 10 out of 10. What else have we got? Flux Distributor. The, uh, the S-Mod bonus is, I think, fine. It does mean that some ships can actually now get more flux than you used to. Right? Like, for example, on the Onslaught, the number one thing keeping the Onslaught... Uh, in check is it's gated by its flux dissipation. That thing is terminally overfluxed. So now you can get that 50 extra dissipation by s modding your distributor. That's not bad. But now what's interesting is that compared to, say, s modding hardened shields, you lose five ordnance points, but you gain five ordnance points worth of dissipation. So it's essentially choosing your distributor over your hardened shields or your targeting unit is essentially allowing you to pay, put in five more points into vents than you normally would be able to. It's it's essentially the same idea. You're losing five ordnance points, but gaining 50 dissipation. Then stabilized shields. This is just obviously going to be good on a lot of high-tech ships. I think it's especially good on the Paragon because of fortress shields. Right? Like, I mean, on the one hand, without flux regulation or energy weapon mastery, uh, these weapons generate a lot of soft flux on their own, and then we're getting more soft flux because of stabilized shields being S-modded. But because of fortress shields, that's not really a big deal. You can just turn on the fortress shields, sit tight while the flux, while that soft flux goes down, and the astrals are still going to be putting in work, right? It's not like, like, maybe if you're by yourself, that would be a bit scary because eventually you're going to run out of your flux pool and you have to drop your shields at some point. But with a couple of astrals sitting behind you, you can just turn on that fortress shield and you know, let all of your worries melt away under the s four squalls with elite missile spec and, you know, broadsword, double longbow, triple trident with systems expertise to boost that recall device, bring that cooldown shorter. Works pretty well. As for other things, I've got a little experimental, even going with turret gyros on this thing, partly because these things have long range, but with like thanks to advanced optics, but that reduced turn rate does mean they have a bit of a hard time tracking smaller things like frigates. 
So the baseline effect of charge hours is actually kind of okay on this thing, combined with, you know, again, half of the damage from the point defense skill, right? 25% as opposed to 50%. Right, with five burst PDs, well, I mean, the burst PDs are boosted by advanced optics as well. So these burst PDs get extra range and extra damage. So they can kind of give it a decent net. Uh, I would, on the Astral, by the way, ignore these small slots and this one. They all have smaller arcs and they're all pointing off in weird directions, so I wouldn't bother. Uh, when it comes to PD, five burst PD, or three burst PDs up here, and then these medium slots, downgrade them to just a small burst PD. That works. And then for the Gravitons, these three can converge on one target, which then gets you the maximum shield debuff of 10%, as you can see in this tooltip here. So stacking all of that together is working pretty well. Uh, like these, I, and to be honest, these Gravitons with the extra bone damage from turret gyros can more or less take care of frigates on their own, which is really helpful. And then of course, uh, I did opt to build an ECCM instead of missile racks. That 20% reduced rate of fire is not the end of the world. It does mean your missiles last longer, even though it costs some DPS. So that's kind of like an interesting dynamic there. I think reducing the rate of fire it was the right choice of penalty because you might even argue that sometimes forcing the AI to use the missile slower is an upside in some cases. So I think it's kind of a clever penalty in a sense. Although, you know, everybody was you know, whining about it. Oh no, we're going to get penalties on, on like two hall mods if we S mod them. It's the end of the world. You know, high, low tech is over. Now that if we, if we S mod heavy armor, we're going to have a, a maneuverability penalty. What are we going to do? I think it turned out pretty well, to be honest. I think they, they, you know, the devs for this game are very good at listening to feedback and they take feedback a lot. But when they know that they're right about something, they stick to their guns, and I think that worked out in this case. Uh, again, okay, circling back to this thing, uh, it, the asphalt bonus allowing it to ignore flares is not super relevant. Squalls typically don't have problems with flares, and it would be nice if that bonus applied to the bombers. I don't know, it doesn't. But more importantly, the bonus here is ignoring ECM because the last thing you want is your astral getting closer to the enemy. And you know that it going up against remnants, they're gonna have more ECM than you. Unless you've specifically made your own like mega ECM build to counter their 50% their ECM, which is doable. I do have a fleet for that, but most of the time you're not gonna do that. So you're just gonna eat that 10% range penalty. Well, S modding this completely negates the range penalty. It's not even the, so, which means that these Gravitons do actually have 1800 range, even against Remnants, which is nice, because it means that your, your, your Astral doesn't have to get any closer than that to debuff their shields. So that's pretty cool. You could, if you wanted to, try replacing some of these with Ion Beams. That's also an option. Uh, I just didn't. Also, Solar Shielding. The s -mod bonus is nice. Uh, you're completely negating the effects of solar coronas and hazards and all that. So you can S mod this on all your ships and surf through hyperspace storms without taking any CR penalty, without taking any damage from them. That's pretty cool. On the other hand, the combat bonus of reduced energy damage, that got nerfed. It went from 20% to 10%, which is kind of, I mean, 20% was kind of a lot, but now 10% is at a level where I could probably drop it off of the Astral and it would not, it would actually be better off. I mean, aside from, you know, eating more CR when you take, you know, eating more damage when you go through hyperspace storms, which I am not going slowly through hyperspace storms. I refuse. I am surfing straight through that shit. Give me speed or give me death. I am not slowing down for that. So with that attitude in mind, I might still want to keep them, but the combat bonus has been drastically reduced. So it's not as crazy as before. Now over here, yeah, I mean, it's not that complicated. It's a, it relies on its shields to for defense of so field modulation. Helmsmanship so that it, you know, doesn't get... Because with three capital ships grouped together, the last thing you want is them banging into each other. So helmsmanship does, the extra maneuverability does help mitigate that issue. Target analysis and elite missile spec to maximize the damage of your squalls. And then systems expertise to bring this cooldown down. Uh, yeah.
and then moving over to these guys. And you can squeeze out a little bit of extra flux capacity by building in the flux coil adjunct. Uh, other than that, uh, have I showed off the Omen before? I think I've shown off, no, I haven't shown it off with skills before. So, I mean, normally you would drop five here, and if you have flux regulation, you put five more into caps, which is really good, but fortunately can't do that because I didn't go into technology, but whatever. Uh, I think I've talked about all these hall mods before. Unstable injectors is just 25 extra speed, which is great. And the 15% range penalty doesn't matter because like, it only applies to the animator blaster. And the animator blaster already has 400 range. Like this thing is a this thing's a shotgun. It's point blank. That 15% range penalty does not matter. And then combat skills. This is the ideal omen combat skills. Now, I'm not even I picked combat endurance even though I'm not even getting the uh, combat readiness because I already have crew training and hull restoration. So I'm, or, I'm already getting 100% combat readiness. It's not applying. But you do really want that extra peak performance and reduced combat readiness degradation after peak performance runs out. You do really want those. So I take it on the Omen anyways. Uh, the other field modulation, uh, kind of obvious. It's a shield tank. You know, it's a little baby shield tank, but it's, it relies on shields nonetheless. Point defense increases all damage to missiles and fighters by 50%. Well, the arc emitter, this EMP emitter that it's a system, that is a great point. It's a point defense weapon. It doesn't, now it does not get the range bonus from elite point defense, so don't be fooled by that. But it does, you know, shoot at and target missiles and fighters. So, you know, getting extra damage against those is going to be useful. Systems expertise, that's what turns the omen into a weapon of mass destruction. Because that 50% extra range and 33% reduced cooldown means that this thing can just spam and it can it can drive up to an enemy capital ship and then use its Archimator to disable the engines from the front because the Archimator reaches so far that it'll just go over the ship and hit the engines. Now, if they have, say, resistant flux conduits and impact mitigation, you might think that's a bit difficult, but that's where elite target analysis comes in. I've seen some people be a bit confused about this one. They're, they're like, it seems good, but it seems kind of boring. An easy way to think about it is that at minimum, now it does a little more than this, but in a simple way of thinking about it is it just doubles your EMP damage. It just doubles your EMP damage. That's what it does. Because EMP damage directly tar it's it uses the normal damage formulas, except that it, it, it completely ignores armor and hull. It does no damage to armor and hull and deals direct damage to, to weapons and engines. So boosting that by 100% effectively gives you 100% bonus EMP damage. On top of the fact that your regular weapons also do damage to weapons and engines, but that gets mitigated by other factors. So, you know, if, it's, if you have no EMP damage on a ship, target analysis, you, the elite bonus is nice, but you don't really need it. If you do have EMP damage on a ship, then elite target analysis is really, really good. And you're going to want that, especially on the Omen, right? With, the, with between systems expertise and elite target analysis, it just becomes a total monster tearing, th right? And then also point defense, just tearing through missiles, tearing through fighters, and disabling enemy ships, while also being able to 1v1 enemy frigates really effectively, partly because of the antimatter blaster, partly because the EMP emitter doesn't miss. And that's one of the big issues when you're fighting an enemy frigate, is that it's really hard to hit the damn thing. Well, EMP emitter, it's not, it's DPS is not amazing, but it doesn't miss. And with systems expertise, it's got long range. So that's how they end up winning against enemy frigates very consistently, even against, you know, glimmers and lumens at the, with alpha cores, they, they still beat them. Okay, and then the last build, the goofy little falcons. Yeah, look at that, 30 caps, 30 vents. Uh, Hardened shields, targeting unit, and then what I like to do is advanced optics with ballistic mastery, because what you oh, here, let me show you the how the range profile lines up. So these hypervelocity drivers have 1500 range. Now I'll switch over to the beam. That's 1600 range. You notice how they match up basically perfectly, is because these medium energies are 100 units further back on the ship. So. If you get Ballistic Mastery and Advanced Optics, they line up perfectly at that 1500 range. 
which uh, is pretty good. You know, this debuffs enemy shields, although ideally, ideally you'd really want two ion beams, but I do think you're going to need flux regulation and 35 vents to pull that off. You kind of don't really have the flux for it without that, so I downgraded one to a graviton beam, which before was pretty painful. Uh, now, it does at least debuff the enemy shield to improve the DPS of these things, the mediocre DPS of these things. And then you've got the ion beam with elite target analysis too. So more or less you can see that this thing just sits at extremely long range, pelts them with kinetic damage and EMP damage, and then if the enemy tries to close the distance, well it's got hel it's got like helmsmanship and I've got coordinated maneuvers. So this thing's top speed. It says 93. L let me show you. When we bring in the omens, we max out that coordinated maneuvers. Nine well, that's 19%. It's close enough. This thing's a cruiser. Shut up. All right, you're fine. This thing's a cruiser with 1,500 range and a top speed of 108. All right? And if we turn this off, it goes up to 158, and then, you know, maneuvering jets gets us up to 208. Like, this thing, this thing can move, and it's a cruiser. So if you're trying to catch this thing, and the AI is not being a dumbass, then all it has to do is backpedal with maneuvering jets at, a, at 158 speed while firing from extremely long range. So kiting, very effective. It's very good at it. It's the best ship for kiting. Not sure if that's what I need in my fleet. Now, partly just because it doesn't kill things very fast. I, you know, sticking breaches in there does help with that, because at least the breaches, they have a decent amount of ammo, they strip off enemy armor, and then these things have decent hit strength, so once the armor's stripped off, they do decent hull damage. It just still, it just takes a while. And, uh, yeah. They don't, they don't have any S1 bonuses, because it just needs to maximize its ordnance points. And it may be a cruise. It's got it's got to pay cruiser level ordnance points for its hull mods, but it has pretty low ordnance points as far as cruisers are concerned. So uh, S mods make a big difference there. And that being said, it does get you know the cruiser level targeting unit, which is more than worth the points you're paying for it by design. That's a deliberate. It's deliberately undercosted because you're supposed to use targeting units on your larger ships. You know, for most builds that is. And then, of course, the uh, the S mod bonuses for logistics. They're just kind of nice, you know. Now your your tugs, you can give them efficiency overhaul. Uh, solar shielding was useless on these things before, by the way, because they would just get one. They're they're a hunt. They would get one hundred to zero on their CR automatically by storms, which made solar shielding kind of useless. But now that it gives a hundred percent protection, yeah, you know, might as well throw that on there. Although I think the more interesting one is probably insulated engines, even though I didn't go for that at some odd bonus. Reducing sensor profile by 90%, that opens up some interesting possibilities for a stealth fleet. Right, you can have a capital ship. A, you, if you S mod this on, say, a Paragon, your Paragon now has a sensor profile of 15 to put that into perspective, that's the same as a that's the same as a frigate with insulated engines normally. Fifteen on a capital ship, so you can you you know you could have like say a bunch of uh, I don't know shades in your fleet. You could have a bunch of shades with phase coil tuning, and then some you know some capital ships with S modded insulated engines, and that means that the highest the highest sensor profile of any ship in your fleet is fifteen. So add it all together, it's only going to be 75. And then you get the phase field bonus, reducing it as long as your transponder is off. You can have a very stealthy fleet despite having really big ships, which is potentially pretty interesting. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to run on too long with this. I'll show off more cool stuff later. So, you know, that's it for now, and take it easy.